is the universal lifeline. The farms of the whole wide world, tended by men who live with the soil in every clime and country. Upon lands like these, we depend for sustenance. And to those whose toil provides food for the Earth's millions, we owe a boundless debt. So, to farmers everywhere, this film is dedicated in the hope that it may prove to be of help and profit to them. And I believe this picture will be of help if it persuades the farmers to follow the ideas we're going to present. Uh, but let me tell you this. A farmer is not an easy man to convince. In the old time vaudeville acts, if you remember, he used to be pictured, uh, oh, uh, something like this. But nobody believes that anymore. Because the truth is, today, he's a great deal more apt to look like this. And anybody who tries to put something over on the modern farmer is liable to end up with the short end of the stick. Today, farming is the world's biggest business. And the farmer is a smart, practical, intelligent businessman. When he buys something, you can be pretty sure he's getting his money's worth. And it's exactly that quality of common sense that I want to appeal to now. Now, here's the farm. A good farm. The crops are fine. The cattle are fat. The farmer and his family are prosperous and happy. But something could happen to this good farm. And it could happen in an alarmingly short time. How? Oh, that's an easy one. And you know the answer before I say another word. The soil. The topsoil goes and the farm pretty much goes with it. We all know that, and we've all seen it happen too many times. Well, why? Where's the villain in this piece? I'll tell you. Right here, this layer of thick, hard compound underlying the few inches of topsoil. It's called by different names, depending upon its type and locality. A hard pan. Plow pan. Plow sole. But what it's called really doesn't matter. It's the effect, the result that's important. And the result isn't good. Now, where did it come from? Well, in most sections, we made it. Sure. How'd we make it? Well, to find that out, let's go back to the beginning and get the whole story. When our forefathers first began farming, all the land was virgin land. And all the soil was topsoil, so to speak, as deep as a man could dig. There was no pan there. And so when a seed was planted, this is what happened. Of course, a plant needed the same four vital elements then that it needs now, sun. Air. Water. And soil. Well, the sun was warm, the air was airy, and the water was wet. And the soil, 
Man, it was wonderful. For thousands of years, it had been preparing itself, sustaining itself with the vegetation that bloomed and died, giving its foliage to the top earth for cover and its roots to the subsoil for natural humus. So there was plenty of plant nourishment. And when it rained, the water seeped down and down to where it was stored for use when maybe there was a long dry spell. There was a natural reservoir of moisture to supply the roots as they grew. There was living room for the roots, too. They could go as deep as they wanted to. Yes, a plant had everything in those days. Minerals, nutrients, and above all, the right kind of soil. Soil with tilth that allowed the, the right natural kind of development that grew the great crops that fed a growing world. But uh, then what happened? Why isn't all this still going on? Well, let's see. On what had been virgin land, the people settled down. They built homes and stayed in one place. Naturally, that meant they were farming the same piece of ground year in and year out. As this went on, the silt and smaller particles of earth sifted down to the bottom of the plowed depth. This formed a kind of hard layer. It built up as the process continued. And the layer was packed down by the constant pressure and rubbing action of the plow. Of course, when the giant wheels of mechanical farm implements moved in, they did the same thing. Much faster, and with the added packing power of greater weight. Another thing, animals. They had to be there. They had to move around and their continual treading of the earth had a compressing effect. That helped along the formation of the path. thing you know, there'd be a thick, cement-like layer right under the top few inches of an entire farm. Now, uh, what does that mean so far as the farmer's plants are concerned? Well, a number of things. To begin with, when seeds become plants and start to put out roots, they need room to grow. But here, the pan stops them cold. And that'll stop anything cold. So they have to reach out laterally. And that's bad because, obviously, there isn't room. The roots get in each other's way. Furthermore, what they're reaching out for, mostly, is moisture. Well, they certainly can't find it. Because with that pan, there just isn't any. There's no storage space for it. Nor are there enough of the minerals and other foods the roots need. They've been depleted by the continuous harvesting of crops. How about the topsoil? Well, that's not good either. You see, the topsoil works in a way just like the roots. When it begins to dry out, it draws moisture up from below, if there is any. But here, the pan has blocked off the natural storehouse. So there isn't any moisture. So not only is the topsoil made dry and non-productive, it literally blows away. But uh, how about if it rains? Well, then the water penetrates as far as the pan. 
but it can't get down into the subsoil and be stored for future use. So on a level surface, pools form, which tend to filter down silt and tiny particles, adding to the pan. And on a slope, the combination of pan and water is just as bad. Here you get runoff, taking with it precious topsoil. Even contour farming and terracing can't prevent that. Although these good farming practices are fine where they're applicable, they can't solve the problem of hard pan by themselves. Well, so far, I've painted a pretty grim picture, haven't I? At least I hope I have. Well, I meant to, because it's a grim situation. And the tough part is that there's nothing local about it. This isn't something that just struck Clay County, Missouri, Emmett County, Michigan, and San Joaquin Valley in California, South Africa, or Manitoba, Canada. No, pan condition exists in many parts of the world in varying degrees. With the population increasing as it is, and with hundreds of thousands more to be fed each year, it holds alarming implications for the future, for the country as well as the individual farmer. Because if we allow our soil to go to pot, we let our crop production go right along with it. Now, Recognizing the danger of the situation, the question is, what do we do about it? Fortunately, there's an answer. A sound, simple, practical answer that makes sense to anybody. And that is, break up the pan by sub-tillage. Break it up by three-dimensional farming. Put this invaluable third dimension to work as a new, fertile area that will conserve your topsoil and give new, increased fertility to your land. Uh, I just mentioned uh, three-dimensional farming. Now, just what does that mean? It means that in addition to the length and the breadth of the land, the two dimensions that we've always worked, we're now adding a third. Depth. And it's this depth that does the trick. This third dimension that revitalizes your worn out topsoil and creates new root zones to the depth our ancestors found when they first broke ground. And vegetation is introduced into the newly opened depth, tapping a new store of nutrients. Water joins with mineral plant foods and circulates freeing bacteria to make deep, plentiful humus. Of course, fertilizer may be added to this subsoil. As plants grow vigorously and the roots extend freely with plenty of room, they go down in search of moisture, and they find them in ample abundance in the richness of plenty that lies in the third dimension of up-to-date scientific farming. Well, now, the big question is, how do we do it? And the answer to that isn't hard to find. The answer lies in the ample power of track type tractors and the right deep tillage tools now available to eliminate hard pan, wherever it may be, whatever its depth and formation. The basic tool perhaps is the subsoiler. Easily attached, it penetrates to depths of 24 inches or more. It moves through the ground, it works like this. The subsoiler with a sweep is another sure method of fracturing other stubborn pan. duty chisel is a proven method of deep tillage, valuable for depths of from 9 to 14 inches.
spring shank cultivator provides wider coverage and faster operation in those cases where extreme depths are not required. So no matter where the farm or what the underlying pan condition, there is a scientifically designed tool for every farmer who wants to add a priceless third dimension to his land. Now farming in three dimensions isn't just a dream we hope to see come true in some vague distant future. This is going on right now. In Mississippi and other parts of the southern United States, for instance, hard pan is yielding to the forward-looking farmers who have adopted sub-tillage farming. Not as a way of farming, but as the way of farming. In Midwest America, plow pan is being broken up and made useful in the same way. And in the far west, sub-tillage is knocking out hard pan and has for years made possible many of the astounding crops of this area. The same modern methods have been effective in Mexico, Canada, and many other areas of the world. Well, there's the pattern for the future. The future prosperity of the farmer and the future vital productivity of our soil. As you've seen, it's a pattern in three dimensions, length, breadth, and depth. There are dividends in depth. There's protection for the world against want and protection for the farmer against most of the problems that beset him. Protection against loss of his topsoil, against poor root development, against wind, erosion, runoff. In sub-tillage, lies security for the farmer. The security of the assurance of all good years with his storehouse of nutrients, bacteria, and moisture. There's real security, real prosperity, and real dividends in depth for the world and the farmer. It's waiting for you in third dimensional farming. It's not a way to farm, it's the way to farm. And you don't have to take my word for it. <laughs> I love that third dimension. <laughs>